we were here for our third night anniversary celebration, a little bit about our history. In 1978, a small gathering of people met together in the Bell Hotel in the village of Milton Hall for the express purpose of starting a church. Brother Alan Bishop was the pastor and founder of New Testament in April of 1978. He worked as an insurance agent and was consequently transferred to Germany. He contacted missionary Rick Stuckey, who came to New Testament in September of 1979. Since its inception, the church has had six pastors. Pastor Alan Bishop, missionary Pastor Richard Stuckey, Pastor Jack Thrift, Pastor Tri Travis Harris, Pastor Thomas Adams, and our current Pastor Jeff Craig. The church that started out in the Bell Hotel soon began looking for a permanent place to hold services. In the little village of Kenny Hill stood a Church of England, a chapel called St. James. The chapel was closing and New Testament Baptist Church was able to purchase it. The old Flint building was our first permanent home. God has blessed New Testament with three building phases that make up the current facilities. The fellowship hall was the first stage. The second was the auditorium. The third stage houses our creche, which is our nurseries, the Sunday school, classrooms, and bathrooms. Our prayer is that God will continue to provide the increase, both spiritually and numerically, as we faithfully serve him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, we come thanking you this morning for the 39 years that you've given us. Lord, we all wasn't here at the beginning, and some have fallen away by the wayside. But you have been faithful to us. And Lord, we just thank you this morning that we are able to stand here and to give you the praise and thank you for how you blessed us throughout these years. Lord, not only do we look back, but we look forward. And we would ask that our services today, dear God, that you would bless all of our services today and that our current pastor pray, dear God, that you will be with him and give him the Holy Spirit and your leading to be able to lead us forward in the places that you would have us to go. Oh dear God, as we come this morning, we thank you for each and every one that's here this morning and ask you to bless them and we're asking you to give us a special blessing through the message of Brother Bennett this morning. Oh Heavenly Father, we are trusting in thee and we want to thank you and we thank you for your Son and our precious Savior. His name we
Christ and you in the uh, songs of praise, uh, etc. But he's laid something on my heart and I'm compelled to share it with you. And I'm grateful to be able to do that through his strength, with his authority, for his glory is it? None of us can do anything in our own strength. But all things are possible through him. But he's promised to us his strength in that. Amen. So if you are the word of God, if you turn to 2 Kings for many verses, I know that. 2 Kings chapter 18, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We are grateful for one another's company, Lord. But we're so grateful for your company. We're grateful you never leave us all to see this. This day is about you, you alone. We want to honor your name and exalt you. Praise you, worship you. Lord, we desire to hear from you our ears, hearts, and minds of hope. To receive up of you and bless us, we pray, for what we need. To know not with what we want to hear, but with what we need to, to know you. Edify us that we'd be able to be of some use to you in our communities. We should give us opportunity to testify of our love for you, our salvation by you. This Answer the people's prayers, even when they need to be on what they do. So, I just pray that we would all truly need this moment to this to be in the house of the Lord, because you spoke to Heavenly Father, as an Almighty God, as a friend that sticketh closer than a friend. Our desire is that all of the sin that in this house will be acceptable in thy sin. When I like to speak on this man, Ezekiah, you know, on the secret of his prosperity, by way of introduction, let me just give you some back, background information. I know that you know what I'm going to tell you this morning, and I understand that I just Never repent. I like to study certain people or see it. These people are just we are men, just like us, women, women just like you. You know, we are mortal souls. And God abused and wonderfully and mightily because of one thing that we all have one in common. And that's faith in Him. God honors faith because faith honors God. Amen. He was a righteous man, totally committed to God. Amen. Very rare. Totally committed. Jesus said to the Pharisees in Matthew 22 36, I'll read the verses in a minute, our text verses, when asked, Master, which is uh, the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to them in verses 37 and 38 of Matthew 22, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. I believe this man, Hezekiah, fulfilled this commandment when I read about him. Hezekiah was a young man, you know, that he had uh, assumed the throne in the third year of King Hosea of Israel. He was at this time 25 years old. He reigned for 29 years, and although his father Ahaz, was ungodly, for Ahaz had let uh, everything degenerate, succumb to idolatry, he was in a mess. And although his father was ungodly, Ezekiah, it wasn't like father, like son. Doesn't have to be. One loved God, and one didn't love God. This is what we see before us. But God is God. Amen. And he would have been the same for the both of them if they had to put their trust and faith in him. But Ezekiah made a deep and genuine commitment to the Lord. And I believe because he did this, Edward, that he had one of the most successful reigns among all of the kings of Israel. Amen. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. Perhaps, I'm not sure, you may know. But perhaps this Zechariah was the godly man who advised King Isaiah that we read about in 2 Chronicles 26 5 served as a witness uh, for the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 18 2. If so, then we understand Hezekiah's mother 
would have probably been a genuine believer who had a righteous influence upon him, like my wife Gillian had a righteous influence upon my son Daniel. Whatever the case, at some point in his life, Ezekiah, Ezekiah, nobody else, you have to do what you do. Uh, and, and, did, and this man did what he did, amen. Nobody could do it for him. Ezekiah made a deep spiritual commitment to the Lord and lived a righteous life in verses 3 through 6. Out of all of the kings of Israel, had, only four kings uh, followed the godly example of David. And that was Asa in 1 Kings 15-11, Jehoshaphat in 1 Kings chapter 22, Josiah in 2 Kings 22, and this one, Ezekiah in verse 3. That's what it tells us. It says, of all these kings, that they did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Ezekiah had a great and unusual trust in the Lord, verse 5 tells us. He trusted the Lord more than all the kings of the southern kingdom. No king before him or after him trusted the Lord as much as he did. And because of that, guess what, brothers and sisters? Christ God trusted him. He was a righteous man. He had a spiritual commitment. He moved, removed the high places, meaning the false places of worship. He destroyed the altars and images of false gods, Baal and Asherah. You know, that Asher was a Canaanite goddess whose symbol was stuck up on the temple of Baal, destroyed all of them, and he destroyed the bronze snake made by Moses that had become an idol to the people. He was a righteous man, totally dependent and committed and to God. The verse says this, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, the son of Eva, king of Israel, that Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, and broke the images, and cut down the groves, and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For under those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he claimed to the Lord, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. The secret of Ezekiah's prosperity. Remember this, earthly prosperity, temporal, is that not true? Heaven, prosperity, eternal. Hallelujah. Notice he destroyed the idols. idols. Deuteronomy, we see the commands of God to Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 9. I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Can you remember that day? From the place of bondage that you once was, the mess that you were once in. Who brought you out of that mess? Who picked you up and cleaned you up? Amen. It was Almighty God, our God. That thou shalt have not other gods before me. Thou shalt have make, uh, not make unto thee any graven image, or likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. Paul said to the Galatians, for me to live is Christ. Amen. Joshua said to the people of his day, choose ye this day whom we will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm glad that I no longer have any idols in my life. I'm glad that I'm not involved in any kind of religion. Amen. I'm glad that I don't have a make-believe God who cannot answer me, who cannot listen to me, who not care for me, who is not there for me. Amen. I'm glad this morning that I serve a risen Savior that's there for me in all situations of life, who will never leave me nor forsake me, who has my uh, best interest at heart. Praise His holy name. Notice Hezekiah made a decision to destroy 
the idols. You want to make a decision to destroy the idols in your life. People out there who stand and say you have to make a decision to destroy the idols that's holding them back from the true and living God. It's their decision. Amen. Whom shall I release unto you? Was asked the question to the people. Barabbas or Jesus? Give us Barabbas. That was madness. This is a mad world. Amen. To look at anything and everything else. But the true and living God who has their best interest of all who is continually calling out unto them come unto me all in that labor on a heavy name and I shall give you rest. Amen. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which you know us not. Be still, but know that I am God. This is the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. This is my God whom I love. I only love him, Edward, till he first loved me. Amen. Hallelujah. This man loved him. This man knew him. That's why, because he loved him. He had seen what had gone on around and about him since he was near to a grasshopper. Amen. No good was coming out of it. There has to be something different. There has to be something else. And because of his mother, he realized it, amen. Done because of his mother. And his mother's love of Almighty God now knows it. Hallelujah. See, so notice, we need a personal decision. And for us to spiritually prosper, we have to make a decision concerning the angels that's all in us, hindering our spiritual life. The idols that are keeping us from being faithful to our Lord and His expectations. That are stopping the Lord from using us. That are stopping the Lord from trusting us. Amen. That are stopping the Lord from depending upon us. These are a barrier. Amen. Closing back. Hold us back. He wants to break these barriers down. And cut all of us. And use us for his glorification. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we have also compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, let us stay inside every way, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. See, we are so easily distracted. Disrupted, amen. Let us lay aside. What is he saying to you? He says, Let us leave behind the idols that so easily distract us and causes us to lose the joy of our salvation, that causes us to lose our fellowship with God and sometimes one with another, amen. Leave them aside. You know we are a part of play, we are a part of play, we have to confess our sins. And we are saved from the penalty of sin, and our sins are remembered no in the eyes of God, we are still sinners. We still fail. We are, we are not going to get a hold of us, confess our sins. For he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And we have to be like him concerning one another, amen. Forgive one another. Be there for one another. Stop even things coming between us that disrupts our fellowship one with another. It happens. This man, Abraham, left the earth of Chaldees and his idolatry, illustrating God's calling in, uh, calling in, in if you would, in conversion to Genesis 12. Moses, what did he do? He left all Hebrews 11 24 by faith. Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather than August to suffer the affliction which the people of, uh, with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Amen. He was in a powerful position. He was a powerful man. But he decided rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know the Bible says, what profit does a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? People think if they can win the lottery, etc., I will be answered to all their problems. Not so. Not according to the word of God. Amen. What profit does a man if he should gain the whole world, own this whole world? He should die without God. Amen. Immediately, you know what he won with it. I'm glad I have him. 
He that shall pay all my needs. Not my wants, my needs. My needs is all I need. That's why he said, I supply all your needs. It's satisfactory to me. He's satisfactory to me. Amen. He praise his holy name. For oh, there's pleasure in sin, rest assured. But only for a sin, it ain't going to be worth it. And confessing is unforgiven sin. Unforgiven sin means damnation and separation from God. It's not worth it. Amen. The Israelites said the bondage and the bitterness of Egypt is really being delivered from sin of the world. Bartimaeus, he left his garment and responded to the call of Christ and illustrates what? That we should leave anything that hinders us from following the Lord. Joseph left his coat in the hands of Potiphar's wife rather than sin with her. David left behind the armor of Saul that he was offered. Because it was an encumbrance to him. What is right for others? Listen, what is right for others, brothers and sisters? Maybe an encumbrance, a burden to us, an endurance to us. David didn't want the things of the world. He had faith in God, didn't he? What good was the armor of Saul doing? Saul would have his shoulders above anybody else. It would have been an encumbrance to him. He trusted in the Lord. We come up against that bullet trust in the Lord. Paul left behind his religiosity because it kept him from Christ and the fullness of his blessing. We need to leave behind. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, and give us a license to sin, and then we beat them. Of course not, we know what I'm saying, but give Satan no glory. No glory. No glory. You're not perfect. You're being perfected. Learn from your mistakes. Amen. You are growing in grace. Yes. And confess unto him. As he confesses unto us through the power of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. How privileged and blessed you and I am. That the King of Kings, the real God, the living God, speaks to us. That's how much he loves you. Amen. That's how much he knows that you are a knows that you have an adversary that hates you because you are created in the image of God. Our adversary is not in obedience for an angel, amen. You are created in the image of God for the eternal relationship with God, which he can no longer have. He's jealous about it. And he's angry. Look, he is real. I could say that you have a beautiful newborn child. That devil would want to take away your child as soon as possible. You have to be realistic about a few things. This world needs to wise up a little bit. Amen. Needs to open their eyes. He's spiritually blind. It's the blind leading the blind. Damnation and separation. But because of people like you who believe in my Lord, your Lord, Amen, who testifies unto the world. Who preaches God's word and teaches God's word. You love him just like this man loved him. There's hope for a dying lost world. Amen. You are the hope. Christ is sat on the right hand side of the Father at this moment in time. He said to the disciples, Go ye into our go ye out into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, the other most part of the world. Preach and teach him. For he is real, David. He is the Savior. Amen. This man knew it. He knew his dad had it wrong. He knew his mother was in a mess. He made a personal commitment. But when against the thought of the beliefs and the religious crowd around and about him, amen, he made a stand. He wasn't outnumbered. Just like Elijah wasn't outnumbered, amen. You think he was 400 to 1 on the Mount of Carmel, in Mount Carmel, but he wasn't outnumbered. The Lord told him he wasn't. You may look around this morning and think, gosh, look around, look out, look around. We are remembered, you are not. You are the victory. You're not going to get it. You've got it in him. You see it, the risen Savior that knows the desires of your heart. The years you are praying, that's there for you on a daily basis. You're the child the children of God. He's your heavenly father. He doesn't want to harm you. He won't allow any harm to come to you. You'll be the 
separate you from him or him from you. Amen. You save and secure. But look, your faith, my faith, doesn't exempt us from any trials, or tragedies, or sorrows, or temptation, or wickedness, or anything else. But if we put it into action, we will save from the fruit. That's his promise. This man knew it. This was the secret of Hezekiah's spiritual prosperity. He made a decision to keep his eyes upon God and to destroy the idols uh, was, that was an hindrance to him and others. You know that the sun is gloriously obvious, isn't it? Raining again in Wales, believe it or not. It is, it's the truth, it is. It's, it's always raining over there. It never comes, it always fizzles out. I'm glad if I didn't have the word of God, I'd be doubting because I know that the sun shines upon the righteous, but not. What are we in Wales then? You know, we've got to. You know, I have the word, I know different, but you know, some people's idol is the sun. Some people idolize the sun. They can't be their idol. Amen. Sunday, religiously cleaning the car. It has to be done. It's becoming an idol. Amen. Money is an idol for a lot of people. We know the Bible says the love of that is the root of all evil. You don't even have to have it. It's the love of the money. That is the evilness. Amen. We do anything and everything for it. Some people's bed is their idol. You can't get out of bed for two services. They can't get out of bed and Jesus rose from the dead for them. Amen. But it becomes their idol. Entrances between them and God. Verse 5 tells us how this man did it though. His prosperity. Trusted in the Lord. His testimony is because of this there was none like him before or after all the kings of Judah. That's God testifying about a man. There is none like him. There is none like him before and there is none like him after. Amen. Because of his trust and faith in God. God honors you, rest assured. God, you are a great high priest and he speaks about you on a daily basis. He intercedes for you on a daily basis. Amen. Because you are special and precious to him. God will honor your faith. Because your faith honors him in this world. God will honor your trust. He said about Job, there is none like him in all the earth. He said of John the Baptist, there's never been a man born or woman greater than John the Baptist. He speaks about Janine Gray, Jeffrey, Marcus, Edward, his wife, he speaks. Because you are his children, his enemies. And he loves you for trusting him. You can't always understand him, he knows that. But when you put your faith into action, he loves you even more. Hallelujah. Amen. This man loved him. They were faithful men who trusted him. Uh, made a, a decision to serve the Lord. John Baptist not a uh, big one, Job, etc. For said of Jesus, this is my beloved son, amen. Because Jesus honored the Father. Solomon, the wisest man in the Bible. That's what the Bible says. God is free by trust in the Lord. He said with all my heart. Be not into their own understanding, nor always acknowledge him, and he should direct their paths. And this man who had a great experience, yet I know many wives and many compliments from all over the world, didn't he? Serving all their gods and with all their religions and everything else. And he learned Yahweh. Imagine that in the deeply basic pastor. All of those wives bombarded me with their thoughts and beliefs, amen, and they wanted to put up with it, but all of a sudden he's all oh, trust in the Lord! Through the Psalms, all through the Psalms, you hear the Psalmist saying, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust? Psalm 118, verse 8 and 9, you know all that. It's better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord, verse 9, and put confidence in um, royalty. Amen. Now, verse 
sentimento do nome. Mini era fácil. Que é fome, porque desse nome era fácil para mim. Because there's a kind of made a decision to stand for God, to trust in God. You hear saying he's going to remain steadfast in God. Pastor can preach all he likes. He do all he likes the word of God, amen. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will play his part and confirm what he is saying is the truth. And you better adhere to it, amen. But it's your personal decision. You have to say yes yeah or nay. Nee. It's your decision, amen. This man made a decision to remain steadfast, to stand for God, to trust in God. We are told in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That's hard to do. That's what we saw flippantly read it to me. But it's hard to do. Say yes, it is hard to do, David. We can do all things all through Christ who is strengthening us. Yes. For he is faithful that promised. Sing the song. Upon God the solid rock I stand. You know what I sing? We sing that we sing to the world. We are unmovable, unconquerable. The Bible tells us he are more than conquerors through him that loves you. You mean we sing sometimes? We have some songs this morning, I knew. They miss what people sing. It's not just because they're good singers. They are good singers, obviously. But I listen to the tone of their voice and I can feel the emotion. I can see the love in the eyes, etc. Okay. People know if you love the Lord or not, rest assured. Practice what you preach or preach what you practice. People know. You should be known by your fruits. Okay? I look at you this morning, I know that you love the Lord. My spirit is bearing witness with you. I know that you love the Lord. You should want my son. Because you know he is not his I believe it wasn't hard for you to come to church this morning. You don't come to see me, a man from Wales, or a great man from Wales with a bad accent. But you come to see a brother in Christ, just reading from the Word of God, amen. Because you know that it's the bread of life. It's that what you need. It sustains us and keeps us going. It's the truth, the old truth. Even the night is written in this book, not the truth. And they work out of themselves. But there are lies in this book. But they are true. Because they are the word of God. I'll give you a quick example for you to What did Peter say to the Lord? Basically, power of wisdom, death shall come. I am not the Savior of my people. But he did to me. Life. Therefore, the Bible that is written in this book is the truth. It's about a man that life. But that's for another Bible study and another day. But anyway, <laughs> not that grab our attention, amen. <laughs> but, <ever that. laughs> but this man, and the Lord said of his son, the Father said of his son, all through the psalm, the psalm is saying, to trust in the Lord. Lucas verse 6, this man clearly. Or meaning he had fast, and the Lord had fast on him. Because this man had made a decision, just like you and I. Hezekiah's secret for prosperity was simply his faith. He made a decision, Edward, to destroy idols, verse 4. To trust God to him, in verse 5. To remain steadfast, David, verse 6. This was his decision, amen. Verse 6 also, we read that he kept on following the Lord, for he claimed to the Lord and departed not from following him. Now we see in that his case, perseverance. Jesus says, and he knows sometimes, he knows, brothers and sisters in Christ, he knows, and you have to realize that he knows this. He knows on behalf of us all that sometimes the road is rough. He knows that the road is sometimes long, amen. 
He knows that the road for you is difficult. Faith, confidence, and 
all of this work will throw upon us, and all of the adversary will throw upon us. Amen. Take the element of salvation and the soul of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in all wisdom, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching for the uh, with this purpose, with all perseverance and supplication, all sins. You know what? Faith can, as, and will destroy all of the devil and throw at us. Faith binds our nothingness to all my kids. That's Shadra, we shall be Samson, as Stephen, our faith finds our nothingness to all Listen, you cannot serve two masters. You can't have one foot in church and one foot in the world. That's be one or the other. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's like that, isn't it? Kind of thing. You stand stable. Almost done. I know if you want some physical food as well, I understand that. I finish with this. If you are here today as a Christian or non Christian, and I try and make this clear as I've written it, Marcus, amen for the glory of God. If you are here today as a Christian or non Christian, you decide just like Ezekiah did to put away the things, the idols that are hindering your greater faith as a Christian or salvation as a non-Christian and you decide to trust God to remain steadfast or become steadfast in the faith to persevere with the ways uh, with the ways of the Lord and to be obedient and true remember this because this is going to happen it's happened it may be happening but it will certainly happen amen you're going to find yourself spiritual battle. If you were a Christian and you decide to do more for God, you're going to find yourself in a spiritual battle more than ever before. If you're a non-Christian and you decide to take him at his word and accept him as Lord and Savior, you're going to find yourself in a war, in a spiritual battle. Put on the whole armor of God, amen, to be able to withstand against it all, Christian and non-Christian in his word. The infallible and errant word of God in its entirety. It is written. Amen. You will find yourself with enemies because the world, as I said earlier, is at enmity with God and with God's people. But I tell you this for nothing. You will not regret becoming a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Because although you will endure many hardships, you will experience more many blessings. Wow. You know, he's blessed you. For you, yes, David, I know he's blessing. And the blessings you know about, you can't thank you enough for. But he's blessed you with far more than you do not know about, rest assured. He protects you on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Because of your love for him. He loves you for loving him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Notice then on finishing what also says in verse 7 about this man. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. This is telling us that we are the victory. Amen. Wherever you find yourself going in the name of the Lord, you're going to be prosperous. The Lord is going to honor you for honoring him. There's no greater reward, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. If you are you as a Christian, let me just tell you this. When we all get to heaven. We see the Lord. We see those scars that we said about the love, forgiveness, justification, salvation, joy, peace, rest, etc. I guarantee you, this is benedology, not theology. Because heaven is a place of no more remembrance, amen. And hell is a place of no more forgetting. It's a massive difference. We will never forget the opportunity to receive God given salvation. You will never remember what experience upon this earth because there's no more tears in heaven, amen. And people say, oh, I can understand that because of emotion, etc. And the water oh, oh, she's looking down upon me, no, that they never have a relationship with Christ and things like this. He's looking 
down upon me from above. Nobody in heaven can look down upon his power. Only God himself. Because if anybody in heaven can look down upon planet Earth, it would cause them to weep. It would cause them to be sorrowful. Hurt would come into play. Amen. And it would be no more a place of perfection. God won't allow that to happen. God loves you too much. You allow that to happen. Amen. Only he looks upon planet. We had done more for you when we took them. If you were here and you were not a Christian, let me just say this. If you take that step of faith and trust the Lord as you will save you, I guarantee you, you will not regret it because spiritual prosperity, brothers and sisters in Christ, is far greater blessing than anything after this world has to offer. Spiritual prosperity is far greater than anything this world has to offer. The decision is yours. Amen. Spiritual blessing far outweigh anything that this world can offer to us. And I'm glad that I said that because I know I'm saying the truth. I used to desire things of the world. The thing that could change my life is what I needed, etc., etc. Amen. But nothing compares to my Lord. What He has done for me. Doing for me, and certainly not what he's going to do for me, amen. Spiritual prosperity comes to your faith. How do you know? But we just read about a mere mortal soul, just like you and I, amen. It's a true story. Thank the Lord for his book. You and I may not be written in this book, amen. Our names may not be in this book and never will because we can't add to this book, amen. But you and names are written in a far greater book. This book, and I think I have the right to say that because you and me have written in the man's book of life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet, bow our heads, close our eyes just for a few moments. I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond to this message. The Lord has spoken to you in any way. Come to him today. Whatever that burden is that you might be carrying today, you can bring it and lay it at his feet. Be sure he will take it. If you need salvation today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today can be that day. Whatever your need, as the music begins to play, the altar is open. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time. And I just pray, Lord, that you would. Work in hearts as only you can. Father, we love you and we praise you today. Please take control of this time of invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I know the next thing the church needs to buy, and that's the cure for the baptism. Oh, this, this morning it is just a great privilege here that Brother Nick has come, sorry, Brother Nick, Brother Twain has come to be baptized. And uh, I've spoken with him, and I've spoken with his wife as well, and there's a clear salvation testimony there because we were there to witness it, and it was a wonderful time, and uh, we we're just excited. He knows that baptism is not something that saves him. It's an act of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's quite aware of that. He knows it's an outward picture of an inward change. Romans 6, 4 tells us, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Do I confess Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? Praise the Lord. Would you like to follow the Lord Jesus Christ in the of baptism? And on your profession of faith, my brother, in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in His likeness.
Sorry, you have to close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the man who today. I thank you, Lord, for the family that is joined. I pray that you will bless this fellowship this evening, that everyone who is going to go to the house will enjoy the beauty of the city and global. Any other meals that they have, Lord, I'll be delivered. Most importantly, Lord, the fellowship between brothers and sisters and fellow believers, that while we're out there, we'll be a good example. I pray that you will continue to bless this church, add to it spiritually and physically, and I pray that we can all work together and become a more cohesive human. Uh, understand our parts of the body. I pray that you'll bless this evening. Thank you, Lord. Have you said travel safely.